it is seat making time. So I've decided I want to kind of rough together some seats for this thing. I've got some ideas in my head. I've also got some ideas on paper. So sometimes what I'll do is I've got a really good idea in my head, but um, for some of the touches or a little bit of inspiration on maybe a couple little changes that I feel like might add to it, I'll kind of search through stuff maybe online, other things that I've done. For this particular build, you know, it's obviously, my theme is a modern hot rod. So, um, you know, if I was just doing a, you know, something like this, uh, I, you know, I've got a pretty good idea of what I'd want if I was just gonna do a traditional hot rod style seat. But, because I wanna modernize it, I wanna kinda take that and mix it with uh, something that's a little more modern, like a modern race seat. So you can kind of see these ideas that I've printed off. I mean, like we're talking super modern. Um, you know, and there's usually what'll happen is I'll find something and each one will have one characteristic that I usually like. Uh, and so, you know, it'll probably be a blend of a lot of this stuff. So anyway, that's the idea. Uh, I just kind of storyboard this stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna make one of these. I just like the ideas of little parts of each. And so I'll kind of jumble that up in my head, try to put that into sheet metal, and then we'll see what it looks like. So you can kind of see I've already done that with some of the sheet metal. This is the back section here, and I've just got some guidelines as far as what I want to do, uh, either in shaping it, so like, I think I want to raise this section up here, um, just under the legs, and probably like dish this out and this out, and then same thing with the back. I'm gonna put a little curve in it too, in the back section. Uh, kind of roughed up a side profile. This is mainly just so I can fit it in the car and kind of see what that looks like. One of the small problems I'm gonna have with this build is that um, it's so narrow. There's not that much room for driver or passenger. So I can't really do these really extravagant curvy style seats, which, which is very racy or modern. Um, but I kind of want it to have that feel. So it's gonna be kind of a, a tug and pull as far as making it just a square bomber seat, uh, but that looks a little bit curvy or a little bit modern. So, you know, we're talking for the driver, we're talking like just under 16 inches wide. I mean, like hip width, hip width. Uh, passengers 15 inches wide. So, I mean, it is super tight. Matter of fact, um, it's probably gonna keep a lot of people from being all right in this thing. All right, so there's my basic shape. Nothing crazy fancy. And so the sheet metal itself will just kind of follow this line. Uh, and then the center of it, I'll actually shape it a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of contour. And then this template here doesn't actually show the flanges. So I may do some like bolstering style flanges that you know come up like this and then come down and recess for a belt. And then maybe come back out, you know, like, like a, like a, kind of like that. 
with some bolstering in it. It'll be much easier for me to kind of do the bolstering inside the car. So if I get the basic shape done, the pan done, sit in it, make sure that it's what I want, I can kind of add those pieces separately uh, as accents. And then what I'll do is I'll even actually have them, you know, have this cool shape to them and they'll, you know, they'll be riveted on or, or, or something. Uh, may do some speed holes in this thing and have the shape of that bolster piece that comes down actually maybe go around it. You know, I don't know. Do something that's pretty intricate. Right now I'm only worried about the base though. Now, one of the things I didn't show you is that I have been working on this uh, for a little bit already. Uh, let's see, we've done, I've done four renditions. I've cut out four different styles. So uh, I started with this one here. It says 50 degrees. It's actually what, 130 degrees? Is that right? 140 degrees? So anyway, I started there and just kind of worked my way up because this wasn't enough angle. It was making the seat too long inside the chassis. It wasn't what I was looking for. So that's what I ended up with. 121 degree bend at the bottom there, 121 and a half, and then 158 up top. And I may massage those just a little bit. But uh, yeah, just to show you some of the progress, some of the stuff that I use, leave off the channel sometimes. Mainly because it'd be boring to show the same thing over and over again. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize what goes into something like this. You know, I probably got an hour and a half just working on these templates. And I even started making the seat yet. You have heard me talk about RAM board before, and really that's the most cost effective way to do stuff like this because if I was doing this in sheet metal, I'd have a lot more time in it for one, and there'd be a lot more cost associated with it. So, you know, whatever your choice is for cardboard, I like the RAM board. Um, I've done a Friday video on this stuff before. It's, it's relatively inexpensive and you get a ton of it. So I like to do this, kind of work through everything, get exactly what I want or really close, and then I'll take the template and transfer it over to some sheet metal and start start working that. I'll tell you a cool thing I thought about doing, and uh, you guys let me know what you think. But I've got a ton of these templates where I've built you know just about everything on this car, from the radiator shrouding to the center console to the floor pans to the to the rear section, all that stuff. I've got templates of RAM board that I've done, and it's got my own little notes on it. I mean, you can kind of see how I've done some of this stuff and writing notes and doing stuff. What are you doing, Weezer? Um, I mean, you can see just all kinds of stuff. There's the trans tunnel there. So anyway, I thought about, uh, I'm not gonna need this stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna reproduce, I'm not gonna build a second one of these. And if, if I ever have to replace a panel, I would just use the panel itself, most likely. So I thought about giving them all away. I think it'd be cool. I mean, it's obviously not a super valuable piece of anything, but it's a piece of this that, you know, you could have at your house. You can be like, look, this is the template that he used to build X or whatever. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. I might do that. We got four more to add to the collection. So those are the basic shapes. I'm gonna just knock one out and kind of see, see if it is what I want it to be. Not really concerned about uh, the straightness of the cut lines because I've actually got some lines in here. If you can see that, that's where I'm gonna break this edge over. Both, oh, basically on all the sides. What that's gonna do is gonna give me a little flange to mount the top piece to. So, work on that a little bit and uh, kind of see where I'm at. 
Oh, I didn't put the headrest section on there either. So if you look on the template, I actually have the headrest section on there, but I just did that from kind of mock-up to kind of visualize what it was gonna look like. The headrest section itself will just be flat sheet metal, and then I plan to put like a, I don't know, three-eighths, half-inch um, aluminum round tube around the whole edge of this thing to kind of finish it off. So for the actual seat, uh, I just needed the aluminum right up till the headrest. All right, so you've seen this process before. This is a, uh, basically I'm just taking, this is a bead roller, basically I'm just taking what they call a tipping die. It's just a really sharp die with a rubber wheel on the bottom. And I'm just gonna try to start to break this edge, break it over a little bit as much as I possibly can. So hopefully you can see that, kind of got that rounding over started. Now what I'll do is I'll go over here, put a little pre-stretch in here and a little shrink in here because as this thing folds over, it's gonna wanna shrink that metal down and just the opposite here. So here I'm basically just doing the same. Oops. Basically it's doing the same thing. So. Kind of see as I fold that over manually, it's just stretching that metal. Now it looks rough right now. As I kind of work this panel, it'll start to clean up. Like this piece here, you gotta go in. All right, so there you go, it's kind of roughed in. You can see it's got a flange all around the top. And it's still rough. Uh, I'll, I'll come back and I'll clean some of this edge up. I just wanted the basic shape for now. And the thing is too, is that this edge won't be seen either. So cosmetically, I'm not that worried about it. I just need the actual shape of the seat. So now I'm gonna go over the sheet metal break. I'll break it on these lines. That'll help straighten this panel up because those will be nice straight bends. Come back, tune this up a little bit, and then we'll kind of take a look, see what it looks like in the car. All right, let's give it a little look-see. Probably should have done the other side first. All 
So one of the things that's probably going to happen is you see that that panel's well basically flat right now, and the back piece that I've got kind of designed for it has this curve just before it gets into the headrest. So most likely what'll happen is I'll actually curve, start curving this thing in like that, which won't be hard to do because I can just shrink this panel and shrink that panel. And as I shrink those, I can create the curve that I want on both sides. And so that thing will kind of have this like that. On both sides, it'll kind of come up, roll in. All right, well, pretty happy with that. I kind of wanted the seated height to be about as high as these blocks. I kind of sat on them and tested them out. So that's about where that is. It goes, the seat goes all up to here right now, um, which is really not long enough. When you sit on this block, like, you know, the bottom, the very bottom of your butt is like right here. So like, you know, your knees are way out here. So I don't know. I may actually make a second part of the seat, have it split, have a second part that actually attaches to the floor plan, it's, pan itself. But I don't know. I guess I'll make the seats first and then see, see where I'm at. So one thing I have not done in a really long time that I used to do all the time is open mail on the channel. Let's see what we got here. Sweet. So two things that I really like are t-shirts and stickers. Can't say I guarantee you that if you send me a t-shirt up on, on the channel, but it's pretty likely. So if you got some t-shirts out there you wanna send, by all means send them. But we'll tell you this, I'm pretty particular about my t-shirts. I really like like tribe blends or good like 50-50 cotton. So the better the t-shirt, the more likely it is that it'll end up on the show. Extra large if the stuff runs small, if it runs normal, maybe a large. And uh, you guys know I used to do stickers all the time. I used to get everybody to send me stickers, put them on all my equipment. If you ever notice in the film or in the videos, I got stickers on my equipment. I used to do that all the time and I may start doing that again. So there you go. Y'all send me over your shop stickers or if you got if you want to send some t-shirts try try to get them worn so back to the task at hand so I've got all these side got these both side panels done pretty happy with them just got them fastened to the table so uh, so to kind of stand up while I work on it and I've kind of roughed out where I want the shape to be in this thing Try to put some shape in this, just a little bit. Uh, maybe try to crown this up just a little bit. And then you can see the line back here. Put a little bit of shape in it this way. And there's the headrest section. So the only thing I need to do really is I need to kind of cut this template with the side shape that I want in this thing and, and go ahead and cut out the headrest part. Get that aluminum cut and then I can start bending it up and click on it on here we can put uh, some shape in it maybe do some bead rolling yeah just try to get this piece fit
You've heard me say it a bunch of times, like a lot of this stuff is just one of those processes that you just gotta work through. This is definitely one of those, I gotta kinda just work it and feel it as I go, and hopefully in the end we come out with something pretty cool. It doesn't always work, kinda like my templates. So there's four there and I end up adding another one. There's another one over there on the table before I got what I wanted for this thing. All right, so there we go. Got all the lines laid out. And uh, I don't know, it might be tough for you to see this because the reflection, let's see if we look this way. So I'm gonna do like a little headrest, gonna bead roll a little headrest section in there. Um, I kind of want this to look like back padding. So that's kind of the idea. Gonna bead roll that in there and leave a void here in the center and probably do some dimple dies down the road kind of got this bend here laid out and then there's another bend here. Uh, when you're laying these things out, you have to lay some of it out on both sides because of the way this stuff goes in the bender or the, you know, the English wheel or the bead roll or whatever. You gotta, sometimes you have to have the lines on the other side in order to kind of trace what you're gonna do. So you have to make sure that these lines match the lines on this side. All right, so, and that took, to lay that out the way I want to, that took probably, gosh, probably maybe a good 45 minutes to an hour just to kind of think through everything. Now, the hard part is you've got to do some of this stuff in a certain sequence. So in order to get it to go in the bead roller, it's got to be relatively flat because it's got to fit through that little slot. So if I start bending this thing up, I'm not gonna be able to twist this thing through the bead roller anymore. But some stuff, if you bead roll it, you can't break it in the sheet metal break because it's then got lumps in it. If you were to break it, it's gonna put a crease line in it. It's really gonna mess with you. So I think I can still make it happen, but it's gotta be done in a certain sequence to get it to, get it to do right. Just figuring out what that sequence is is going to be the trick. So the first thing I want to do, oh, the other thing is I want to use this, I want to put this thing in the English wheel and give it some shape. I don't want it to be perfectly flat. I kind of want it to look like a modern day seat. So that's really got to happen first because the English wheel is just going to flatten out anything else that I do. If I put a bead in it with the bead roller, when you run through the English wheel, it's just going to flatten that bead out or you won't be able to run it through there. So on this particular panel, uh, the center of the back so all through here I want it to have some shape and then the center of the the seat where your butt's gonna be I want it to have a little bit of shape there too not much just just kind of uh, give it a little bit of character so that's the first thing we're gonna do all right so I have basically the flattest die that I've got not the flat it's not the flat it's just like one step up, but if you look at it, can't really see much arc in that thing. Uh, we're gonna start with this. 
We're gonna see what it does. We definitely don't want us, we don't want lines. We don't want kind of like crease lines in it. And sometimes if you start with a dye that is too aggressive, you're gonna have those lines. We just want just the least amount of shape we can put in this thing. Okay, now we got shape in it. Uh, it's starting to look, the back of it's starting to look like a seat. So you can kind of see it's got some shape to it. Bottom, same way. And really that's what I want without, you know, making it just too out of shape. Now, before I get any further, I need to put these beads in it. So we're gonna bead roll this edge here and go ahead and bead roll the headliner portion and then we'll put a recess in here. We're not gonna worry about the dimple dies just yet. I'll tell you what's crazy is at this point in, this point in this build of this seat, still don't even know if it's gonna work. Got all this time, got a lot of money tied up in aluminum and still no idea if it's gonna work. That's just part of it. Well, I mean, for one, I got, I got some confidence in the fact that I can make this happen, but you know, sometimes you just never know. Close. 
getting close so you can see. Maybe you can't. And you'll have to excuse the rain because this rain's getting ready to come down. But so we got like a got a little dish here. And then if you look, that back piece has a nice contour to it. And then all the bead rolling kind of makes it look like uh, some kind of padding or upholstery. It's recessed in here, recessed out here on the side, and then the headrest itself kind of pops out. So it probably kind of looks like I'm getting really close to being done, but I'm actually a long ways away still. The bead rolling the English wheel portion, um, you know, I kind of got it fit, but so still a lot to do. You can kind of see on this top piece that it comes way in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these side panels match that. So probably uh, shrink it, shrink this flange a little bit on, on this panel right here to get it to kind of bow in. And then once it gets up to about right there, start stretching it to get it to bow out. And then up here at the top, we want to get that thing to kind of bow in again. So that side piece shouldn't be straight. It should kind of have a little bit of a curve to it. So like, like I've said in the past, we want to kind of stick to that bomber seat style where it's straight, but then kind of throw in a little modern flair to it. That's why I didn't go uh, too over the top on this. Same thing with kind of getting a little contour there and a little contour on the back side. Now the plan in the end is, the reason I'm still a long ways away is because I'm going to do some bolstering. So it'll have some plates that kind of come out off this side, come up, hang over a little bit, uh, you know, kind of come down like this and come back out something like that. Probably flare up top a pretty good bit. Uh, I'll really work it around the roll bars in the car, the door bars because they're pretty tight right here, so I'll have to kind of work that bolstering around. And then what I plan to do is uh, some half inch aluminum tube. I'll actually use that around the whole edge to kind of finish it off. So even up here at the top where it's just flat sheet metal, once it's done, it'll kind of have some aluminum round tube that kind of follows that around. It'll be all riveted in and really give it a nice finished look. All right, so let's, uh, Let's bust the thing off the table, slide it in the car, and kind of see see what it looks like. Because really, that's all that matters. I dig it. It's a really good start. I'm really happy with it. I actually like the way it looks without the bolstering, so I don't know. Maybe kind of doll this up a little bit. The speed holes down here at the bottom. Um, obviously, there'll be a panel right there on that side, on the transmission side, so that'll kind of fill that section in. Hmm. Interesting. Well, rain's rolling in. I guess that's it for me. Part one of probably like four because I gotta finish this one and then I gotta build a whole nother seat. So anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next Friday. Go do work, son.